This Hero Club Christmas special uses homebrew from our good friends at Mage Hand Press. Go check them out at magehandpress.com. Welcome, Welcome to, to Hero, Hero Club. Club. I'm Nick Williams. And I am George Primavera. George and I have been playing D&D together for years. Now, a lot of people think you need to be a big, huge nerd boy to play Dungeons & Dragons. But in reality, you just have to be willing to spend four hours of your own time on a weekday trashed on cheap beer cross-legged around a coffee table. I lost a game of Flip Cup in 2012, so I had to buy all the books and learn how to be Dungeon Master. My dad was disappointed. Yeah, he was. But after a game or two, we realized that it's actually a really fun and effective way to tell an awesome story. Yeah, it's like long form improv, but you kill more people. Here's what you need to know. George creates a world and the framework for a cool story. And the players, like Nick, create characters beforehand, all with special abilities, sometimes magical, sometimes not. And they adventure through the story as best they can, trying not to die. We the players roll dice to see if our improvised actions fail or succeed, trying to beat a number in George's head that he promises he doesn't change at will. But at the table, I am God, my game, my rules. Okay, so it's as nerdy as you thought. You know what? Just f man. Oh, okay. It off, right. okay? Nick, 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 maybe don't tell everybody to And it's not that nerdy. I mean, we get rid of all that stupid math and we add music and sound effects and stuff like that. So, you know, it's cool. Anyway, these stories do follow a linear plot. So if you want to know what's going on, start at the beginning of any season you like and have fun with it. Without further ado, Welcome, Welcome to, to Hero Club! Ooh. Yeah! <coughs> Your parents tuck you in, but no one's sleeping. It's Christmas Eve, and you hear footsteps creeping. Is it a dragon? Is it a gump? Is it a Santa? Well, almost it. Santa's little helpers! Colors and dark flashes whiz by at the speed of light as Santa's little helpers shoot through the horrifying portal that has swallowed little Timmy. Up is down, left is right, and in the brief moments of light, terrifying images register as if emblazoned on the corneas of each toy. A massive hairy spider. A clown with sloppy makeup and a deformed balloon animal under his arm. A barber's hair buzzer. As Alpha Team hurtles through this nightmarish space-time vortex, traveling various winding slides of darkness, they are brought together down a final stretch, another jagged purple tear quickly approaching, presumably the exit. We cut to a desolate gray landscape with a deep purple sky looming oppressively overhead. It would look exactly like the surface of the moon save for the lack of craters and the occasional spindly tree poking out of the ashy dirt. Suddenly. In the sky, a tear opens up, which promptly and unceremoniously spits out the four toys. Well, that was a right old roller coaster ride. Oh, man, Buttercrumb's gonna be so bad at me. That. Oh, boy, that's. Oh, right before I went in, I said, I'm really sorry, and I hope that's good enough, but. I just had to go. I didn't know what was gonna be on the other side. This is terrible over here. Ah, stop your havering, big boy. No one can stay mad at you. Swapper lies perfectly still on his back. Cuthbert, we have entered a nightmare tear because of your irrational actions. Well, Bolts, I'm flattered. Thank you. Suddenly, there's a little spark that revolves around Swapper's antenna. This shocks all four toys, and suddenly they take a moment to look down at themselves. Swapper, you seem to be functioning with some sort of new electrical energy that you're unfamiliar with. Tubbs, you're still adorable and the same general shape, but your hair feels real and authentic, like an actual bear's fur. Helga, 
You register some increased flexibility. Your mitten-like hands now have individual fingers, all dexterous and able to function. Cuthbert, you've remained largely the same, but your gun looks a lot more detailed. Cuthbert shoots his gun in the air. A bullet fires into the sky. A real bullet. Merry Christmas to me! Helga walks over to Swapper and pulls him upright. Swapper feels the electricity coursing around his head. It seems as though we have altered forms in this new nightmare realm. Yeah, my, my new fur looks uh, uh, expensive. It's like the real stuff. Precisely. I fear that it might actually be the real stuff. Well, either way, it's going to be fun. A mischievous grin spreads across Cuthbert's face. Can you all make a perception check for me, please? Eleven. Seven. Two. Fifteen. Swapper, about 50 feet away, you notice, buried in the dust, halfway submerged, is the toy car thrown into the tear by Helga. The front half appears buried, and the back wheels spin relentlessly in the air. A weak motor hums. Helga, I have found your friend, no, no, friend, no, sacrifice over there. The car, excuse me, car. Well, in this barren landscape, I think we can all agree that a little transportation would be useful. And Helga goes over to try to get the car out of the dirt. Helga, can you roll an athletics check for me, please? Ten. The car is pretty firmly stuck in the dust. Oh, Tubsy! Tubbs waddles over to the car. Oh, but, oh boy, you're, t- you're trapped in the dirt. Oh, jeez. Oh, Botch. You're unable to get the car out. Oh, this is just illogical. If you would just... Dig with your hands. And as Swapper says that, the dirt around the car begins to move into the air and away from the car as Swapper casts Mold Earth. The dirt opens up into a big bowl, freeing the car from its claustrophobic prison. All of Tubbs's hair begins to stand on end as the static moves through the air. The back of the car slams down onto the new ramp reverses out of the hole, and you see the car's face for the first time, with two bright headlight eyes and its mouth comprised of the vent in the front. (coughs) Whoa! Oh man, where am I? This isn't the room! This isn't Timmy's room! Whoa, whoa, stay calm now, boy You're in a nightmare realm! The nightmare realm? What? An alarm starts to go off on the car honking over and over again. Oh man, the Nightmare Realm! I've heard about the Nightmare Realm! Uh, Cuthbert slaps a hand down on the hood of the car. Pull yourself together, lad! Okay, okay. Uh, no, I'm alright, I'm alright. The windshield wipers start going. The truth of the matter is that Timmy has gone missing. Oh, what? Timmy's gone missing? We think he's somewhere here. Aye, lad. We're Alpha Team Tinsel sent from the North Pole, and we're deputizing you to help us find them. What? I... Are you serious? You you guys are Christmas toys? Yeah, that's right. You, did you ever want to work for Santa Claus? Oh man, did I ever! More than anything in the whole world! All I ever wanted to be was a gift for a child. In a way, I guess I kind of got my wish. Uh, it wasn't exactly, you know, my preferred situation. But, uh, what are you gonna do? What does that mean? Well, uh, uh so, let me, let me, do you know the company Ford? No. Well, it's a company that makes cars like me, but a lot bigger, and for the groans. So, you know, uh, a Ford was having a big sale, and as a promotional thing, they were giving out little me's. You know, a bunch of my cousins and I. They just lined us up on the counter, and the kids picked them. And, oh, little Timmy went and picked me. That's kind of the same, right? But it's a gift from a big, uh, company, and not from Santa Claus. Yeah, but I never got unwrapped. And I never got to see the workshop, and I never had an elf fix me up real good. Oh man, that'd be the best. But wow, Christmas toys, it's an honor. I accept wholeheartedly. The car revs once or twice. I moved the earth with my mind. Wait, wait, wait. Swapper, that was you that did that? I I just assumed that the car did that. Swapper paces back and forth quickly in a straight line. I moved the earth with my mind, with my mind, with my mind, antenna, mind, with my mind. I moved the earth with my mind. Helga goes over to Swapper and slaps him with her fancified new hand. 
We all have new abilities here, and that I think will come in quite useful when we're trying to find little Timmy. It's weird, but I think in this place we kind of just have to go with it. Talking of finding little Timmy, it's time we get on the move. What's your name, Ford car? Oh, well, they don't really give us names when they made us in the factory, the nameless scary factory that I was made in. But uh, so far, the other toys around the room have been calling me Tutu. On account, I got two twos. The car has two large number twos painted on either side. All right then, 22. Nope, I said tutu very clearly. Aye, I, I heard you. 22. Can you fit all of us? No, what, me? No, you can't get inside. My doors don't actually open. I'm not so much a toy as I am a promotional item. Oh, no, sir. You misunderstand me. I meant on top of you and hanging off of the side. Oh, yeah, that I could do. Cuthbert hops onto the side of the car and hangs off. Helga goes over and tries to open his car door. It pops open. Oh, my... Oh my god, did you just break me? Did you just break my armor? Nine, nine, nine. You have doors now. I got working doors? You're a real car here. Oh, this is the best day of my whole life in the nightmare realm. Is this seat taken? And Helga sits in the driver's seat. It is definitely too small for you. You can get about your three quarters of your body inside, but then your head inevitably sticks out the window. I believe this is, what did you call it, a convertible? Uh, no. No, I'm not a convertible. Please don't try anything. Well, it's going to feel like one anyway. And Helga keeps her head out of the window. I know I was probably being sensitive before with the chimney and how fat I am, but I I don't think I'm going to fit inside of this car. Right you are, big boy. Hop on top. Is that okay? I mean, I got one. I could do two. Even three. Maybe even four. Tubbs lays flat on top, stomach down, and holds onto the sides. We do not even know where we're going in this hellscape. Can't we sit and talk for a moment before getting on top of a stranger and going forward to nothing? I don't know. I already got on top of the car. Swapper, as much as he can, hangs his head and slowly rolls over to the car and tries to climb on top. It's very difficult for you, and it's hard to get on top of the car with your boxy body, but you do eventually figure out that the easiest way for you to travel along with this car is to clamp onto the back and ride the dirt as if with skis. I can move dirt with my mind, but I still can't climb. All right, new best friends, let's boogie! and the car takes off through the ashy dirt. As the tires rip through it, you can tell that this dirt is more the consistency of a powdery snow. There are several weird characteristics you notice about this particular environment. First of all, the stars are bright and focused, but a little bit unnatural, as if somebody has poked holes in pieces of construction paper above. Also, as gleaned from getting a little bit too close to the edge, you realize that this entire place has boundaries as if all of you are standing on a rock that has been plucked out of the earth and hurtled into a different dimension. A floating platform several miles across. The only building in sight is a ramshackle wooden shed, hanging askew just above the entryway on a massive sign. The words, Timmy is not here, are splattered across, terribly misspelled. This sits atop a hill far in the distance. You want I should head for that scary building? Definitely. Very quickly, you realize that it's not exactly a straight shot due to a massive open chasm at least 50 feet across. A black ravine rages below so far down that the eyes can't even quite gauge the depth. Only a thin, rotting wooden bridge connects the two sides, swaying in the breeze. A massive ravine with only a rotten wooden bridge going across it. I'd have been disappointed if there weren't one. Tutu pulls up in front of the bridge. How exactly does your earth moving work, darling? You wouldn't be able to make us a little bridge, could you? Cuthbert has already started going across the wooden bridge. You turn to see Cuthbert already halfway down the bridge. Cuthbert, can you make a dexterity save for me? 19. Cuthbert, a gust of wind blows the bridge, and it almost kicks up on its side like a hammock. But you maintain your grip, and you stay on. A wee bit gusty over here, chaps! Uh, I, I, I don't know about crossing that thing, you guys. Hey guys, I don't know how you feel about this, but there's a, a little patch of dirt over there. I don't know, do you see it? 
On the very edge of this canyon is almost a perfect ramp. I'm gonna be very honest with you. I'm not sure I can make that. Especially not with too many people on me. All right, I'll stay with two two and try to see if we can get more speed. Helga, you go across the bridge and Tubbs, I think it might be better if you jump. And Swapper casts jump on Tubbs. Tubbs, Swapper touches you and there's a spark of electricity. Your hair all immediately poofs into a large ball, but you feel your legs suddenly move through the dirt as if it's a trampoline. Oh, whoa, 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 what'd you do? Simple deduction. I believe that if I can move Earth, I can move static electricity through your body and alter your ability to jump far. All right, if you say so. And Tubbs jumps. One, There's a running start, and like two, a rocket, Tubbs launches off the side of the canyon oh. and impacts on the other side of the ravine, Whoa. his legs dangling off. Oh, that was crazy. Thanks, Swapper. Whoa, that bear just flew. And Tutu wheels around with Swapper and gets ready to take the big jump. Back on the bridge, Cuthbert has almost reached the end. Whoa, yeah, big boy. Cuthbert hurries to the other side of the chasm and starts to help Tubsy off of the edge. Helga, you make it about halfway and you hear a long groan as the wood starts to give under your feet. Can you please make a dexterity save? Nine. There's a moment as if time freezes and then the whole bridge just gives. The rope snaps from the other side. Helga, about halfway across, desperately holds on to the ropes. Helga, can you make another dexterity save for me? Because you're able to use your puppet strings, you're going to have advantage on this one. 14. The tattered bridge slams into the rocky face, but you manage to keep your grip. Are you okay, Helga? Frankly, I've been better. Tubbs begins to pull the bridge up plank by plank. Six. Tubbs, the first plank you grab splinters and cuts in half. Tubbs grabs for the next one. 18. This one does not break. You're able to grab it. It's the last one within your reach, and then you start hoisting the bridge up. Helga desperately holding on to the side. Meanwhile, on the other side of the chasm, you're ready to go? W one second. I think if I touch you, I can enhance your abilities. And Swapper will cast Enhance Ability Cat's Grace on Tutu. Wow! I, I feel great! I feel like I could do anything! Same. I feel like I have almost too much power. Well, okay, geez, don't don't freak out. It's it's okay. I didn't have doors a minute ago. Look at me now, opening and closing. To the other side. Here goes nothing. The car backs up and hits the gas, screeching forward through the dust. Hits the ramp and launches into the air. Whoa! Whoa! The car soars off the ramp, easily clearing the chasm by at least 30 feet. Whoa! I guess I probably could have done it with more people on me. Sorry about that. That was awesome. Helga finally getting over the edge of the canyon. It's fine, but now we know for next time. Cuthbert, who has been surveying the horizon, will make a perception check looking for any sign of Timmy. 13. Cuthbert, after some time as the others finally clamber up onto the edge of the canyon, you notice a very faint trail of footprints that sort of lead towards the shack, but eventually fade to nothing. Oi, everyone, form up. I found tracks. As all five toys reach the bottom of the hill, a little man begins to come out of the sand. He looks like an odd little rag doll with a sewn, unmoving face, absolutely covered in filth and grime. His long, stuffed arms reach up to a top hat, which he promptly sweeps off his head in a grand fashion, bowing his head slightly. Oh, 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 well, hello! Oh, oh, I've... Oh, I've been resting here for such a long time. <coughs> Are you looking for someone? Aye, friend. We're looking for a wee lad named Timmy. About ye high. Human hair, fingernails, probably two eyes. Oh, well, you're you're look, looking for Timmy too? So you've seen him? I was also searching for Timmy. Where exactly did you say you were from? You would never, never know me. I was buried back deep in the closet. I sat there, watching him play with others. 
I was a gift from his grandmother. He named me Gross. And as soon as I was given, I was cast to the back of the closet, only to appear if grandmother was there. Sounds like you need a patented Tiberius Huggins TM bear hug. And Tubbs walks over and gives the ragdoll a bear hug. Tubbs, you immediately realize that Gross is indeed gross. His crusty filth is left on your fur as you separate from your hug. Oh, oh man. Yep, that's about the response I would expect. No, it's cool, man, it's cool. Gross, how long have you been here? Oh, well, time feels like it passes differently. I feel like I've been here forever, but also just, just arrived. Oh man, this is freaking me out. I mean, Timmy played with me for like a whole week before he got tired of me. At least I got a whole bunch of time playing with kids. And that's just dandy, mate. Let's maybe put a lid on that for now. So, when the tear opened up, you got swallowed into it, didn't you, Gross? Yep. Do you have any idea where Timmy might be? Well, I just started walking when I came through. I thought I could see where they were. I went all the way to here and beyond, and I couldn't find anything. So I made this house, and I painted that sign in the hope to save people a trip this way. While your intentions are noted, a sign reading Timmy's not here in a nightmare realm sends the wrong message. Can I put a question to you, lad? What do you mean you saw where they went? Oh. Well, I, I just saw multiple figures, and one was Timmy, and he was just whoosh, and they were off. The toy is gesticulating wildly, but all the while, its face is completely unmoving. About how many figures did you see? Oh, if I had wonderful fingers like you, I could show you. Or use your words, one or the other. Oh, maybe ten plus. Why would fingers help you do that? How many fingers do you have? They stop at ten. So, I would show ten fingers, and then make the plus symbol with two. If we keep talking like this, we are going to lose tubs. I only have two fingers if you include thumbs, I guess. Tubbs begins to stare at his thumbs. Uh, but if you, if you not include thumbs, uh, well, I guess that I, I guess I have no fingers, but... Maybe their paws? Is pa- are paws what I have? What do bears have? Paws? Or fingers? Is it hands? Cuthbert whispers under his breath to Swapper. For the love of Pete, this is the enhanced version of this bloke. What was he like in the closet? While I agree, meanness towards a team member like Tubbs is not required at the moment. Not- Tubbs, you box of tinsel? Gross. Cuthbert turns back to Gross. Say there, fella. You haven't noticed anything you weren't able to do in the real world that you can do now, have you? Uh, no, not really. That is highly illogical. There must be something you can do. You want to find Timmy, too. You'll need to be able to do something. You will be coming with us, Gross. No. I will not be joining you. I'm sick of being stuck at the back of the closet. I belong in a place like this. Don't you think that maybe one last big grand adventure would be good to add before you waste away in this dust land? No! Gross pitches forward a little bit in an almost angry fashion. And as he does, some of the dirt under his feet moves a little bit, but he does not move himself. Oh, come on, I'll carry you on my back. He will not come out of the sand. That's never happened before. No matter how hard you pull, you're unable to release him from the sand. I, I don't understand. Why can't I pick you up? I can pick anything up. That's kind of my thing. What? Don't you understand? Leave! Get out of here! Well, I, I think I was pretty clear. I, I don't understand how I can't pick you up out of the sand. Stop touching me! That reverberates across this open plain like 400 grosses yelling. Oh, all right. Jeez, you don't need to yell. What are you 
And Swapper begins to mold earth around Gross's feet. The earth begins to move, and Gross suddenly goes very stiff. The dirt separates, and you see that Gross's body continues deep below the sand. But his legs, while separate, become pink and damp as they extend further and further underground. Gross's body is now pretty much completely lifeless, but the head turns a little bit. Oh, oh, ah, you should have turned back when I told you! Gross shoots downward into the sand. The gray dust seems to vibrate as if a deep bass note is resonating from under the ground. A voice. And now, welcome to my nightmare room. With a rumbling groan, the dirt begins to rise and cascade back down into the earth as a thick, scaly hide is revealed, unburrowing itself from the earth. Cuthbert's eyes twinkle as he stares up at the monstrosity, and he cocks his gun. Tutu pipes up from the back. Hey, you guys handle this kind of thing all the time, right? No. Oh, cool. Great. That's what I thought. Wait, did you say no? A toad-like head the size of an 18-wheeler finally emerges, somehow slimy and dry at the same time. You insolent toys. You lorbit them a part of my mouth. The creature opens its maw, and broken toys, jammed into place, form the creature's ring of teeth. Tutu's mouth vent drops open. Oh my god, Steve? He's staring directly at a ripped apart jack-in-the-box that forms the bottom left fang of this horrific creature. Ah, don't get your tailpipe in the no- Cuthbert brings up his musket and shoots at the monster. Nine. The bullet bounces off the monster's hide. Nice try, little man. Which dude would you like to be? Helga, using her whips attaching to the creature's scales, attempts to hoist herself atop the beast. Can you make an acrobatics check for me? Twelve. The whips attach, and Helga ascends atop the beast. Can you make a perception check for me, please? Nat 20. While you have climbed atop the beast sort of in its midsection, you notice on the back of its head there is a soft, slimy section. This part of the body looks unprotected from this thick armor, but it's a ways away from you now. And Helga starts making her way toward the exposed patch. Tutu on the ground is panicking, donutting in a circle. Oh my god, what do I do? What do I do? It's the biggest snake! Oh my god, my friend's a monster teeth! As Tutu moves in that circle, dust kicks up and obscures the group partially from the monster's view. Somebody give me some kind of direction! I was only deputized like 30 minutes ago and I'm really out of my depth! You're doing a great job, lad! Just keep kicking dust up so it doesn't see what we're doing! Okay! Alright, let's see what I can do. Swapper starts to rub his feet into the dirt to generate static. Sparks begin to fly off his antenna and shoot out towards a metal toy far back in the row of teeth of the monster's mouth, causing it to glow red hot and casts heat metal for 12 fire damage. Several jacks that make up one of its back molars light up red hot, and the creature bellows to the sky in pain. Its head kicks up, its body shivers. Helga, can you make an acrobatics check to stay on the creature? 14. You manage to hang on. Tubbs takes sort of a football stance and then launches a giant grapple hug at the beast's midsection. Here I come. Seven. The monster rolls a 15. Tubbs, you wrap your arms around as much of this creature's midsection as you can, but it does not stop moving. Tubbs holds onto the scale with all of his might, his feet dragging on the ground. Whoa! The creature, realizing that this bear is pulling at one of its scales, laughs a little bit and turns the side of its body over into the dirt, pinning Tubbs into the dust. But as the body turns over, Tubbs lets go and avoids the roll. The toad-like head turns around ominously and locks with Helga. (sighs) You're cute. Maybe you'll be my new toad. The head snaps outward. The creature, just about to take a massive chunk out of Helga, feels the pain as the jacks turn from a red heat to a white heat, and the tooth begins to melt downward into the creature's gums. 
The tooth sears the creature for 13 damage. With the serpent's head turning back towards Helga, his weak spot is exposed to Cuthbert, who takes advantage and fires. Nine. The bullet goes wide, ricocheting off some of the scaled armor adjacent to the soft spot. Helga, now having made it over to the soft patch, reaches into her apron and whips out a retractable milkmaid staff hook. Don't think I forgot about you. And attempts to jab it into the patch. 24. Definite hit. 14 damage. The hook pierces the soft spot. The creature once again grits its teeth together in pain, and black clouds spew out of the wound. Can you make a constitution save, please? 11. Helga, you are knocked backwards off of the creature, and you land in the dust outside of the coiling monster, separated from the rest of the toys. The hook remains stuck in the monster's wound, black smoke still spewing out of the wound, like a steam engine on a train. Tutu, having lost track of his location in the dirt cloud, accidentally impacts into the side of the monster. Unfortunately, he hits at a weird angle, not damaging the monster, but stopping his momentum completely. Oh man, I'm freaking out! I'm freaking out! You're doing fine, laddie! It's all part of the job! Tutu gets an idea as his backlights light up. Wait a minute, I've got doors now! He opens all four doors, tries to scrape the side of the monster with the doors. Take this, monster! One of the doors wedges its way in between the monster's scales, stabbing the creature. However, Tutu's momentum carries him forward, and the door wrenches off the hinges. The monster takes six damage. Oh my god, I can't feel my door! I can't feel my door! Swapper continues to rub his feet into the ground, focusing his energy on that one tooth. For six fire damage. <laughs> Tubbs digs his heels in to the ground and attempts to grapple the creature again in an even bigger hug. Ooh! 13. 11. Tubbs, you're able to halt the monster's coiling. The best hugs is bear hugs! And Tubbs, still holding on, uses flurry of blows to bat at the creature. Roll your attacks. 24 on the first hit. Hit. 14 on the second hit. Hit. Seven damage. The scale seems to absorb some of the force of the punches, but you definitely dent one of them and push it concave. The monster rears up its head and slams its body into the ground. The entire ground shakes. Everybody, make a dexterity save. 16. 11. 17. 9. Helga and Cuthbert maintain their footing, but Tubbs and Swapper are sent to their backs. The monster appears to be panicking a little bit as he wildly snaps for Helga, missing pretty completely as Helga deftly dodges out of the way. <laughs> this form has so many limitations. Cuthbert fires at the creature again. 17. Hit. 14 damage. A big round musket ball slams into the creature's weak spot once more. More black gas begins to billow. The creature makes no sound, but whips its head around to face Cuthbert. Helga, once again using her whips, attaches them to her hook embedded in the creature's soft spot to propel herself up onto the creature's back once more. 23. Helga easily launches up onto the creature's back. Well, I am a milkmaid after all, and Helga begins to churn the staff hook like butter. 16. That's a hit. 14 damage. Make one more constitution save as even more black gas pours forth from the hole. 15. You manage to hang on, avoiding the big burst of air. The creature looks beaten up. Exhaustion is registering in the eyes as it turns to Tutu. You worthless beast of junk metal. Would you like to feel like a convertible no? What? No? The creature goes to bite Tutu's roof off. The jaws open wide. His gnarly teeth close around the top and the roof pulls free very easily. Oh, hey, what do you know? I am a convertible. With another botch, the monster begins to choke on the now dislodged roof of Tutu. 
<coughs> the body of the snake begins to shiver as the creature begins to suffocate. Swapper's feet continue to scramble in the air, generating electricity as he focuses on the tooth once more. Let's get hotter! Nine points of fire damage. Swapper begins to mold earth around him in an attempt to hide himself. Dirt rises from the ground. Static electricity courses everywhere. Roll stealth check. 13. Swapper is hidden within a giant mound of dirt, but the creature is a bit preoccupied and doesn't notice. Only a little antenna is revealed, still generating electricity. Don't worry, Tutu. I'll get your door out of there for you. Tubbs attempts to remove the door, unintentionally prying the scale off of the snake as he does. Nat 20. The scale pops off like a soda can lid, and Tubbs is engulfed in black gas. Can you make a constitution save? Six. Tubbs is blasted backward, covered in sooty black ash. <laughs> but the creature takes 20 damage. The snake suddenly goes still. The convulsing from the creature choking on the car roof ceases. And suddenly, scales begin to just drop off the monster. Its eyes go gray. A little tear opens up in its front and suddenly begins to peel away. Seamlessly, in one smooth, horrific motion, the creature sheds its entire skin. Helga, on the creature's back, still hanging onto her hooked staff, feels the skin slide out from underneath her and has to walk like a conveyor belt to stay in place. Now, without its scales, the creature appears soft and very slimy, more amphibian-like than reptile-like now. It spits out the car root and begins to burrow its head under the sand, making an escape. You think you have defeated me, but you have no idea what I am. I'm from the dawn of time, and you are foolish, foolish playthings! As the creature begins its escape, everybody will be able to take one opportunity attack to attempt to finish off the monster. Cuthbert squeezes off one more shot at the creature. 22. 13 damage. Helga, seeing that now the entire being is exposed, hops off to the side and embeds the hook part of her staff, opening a wide wound along the creature's side. 22. That's a hit. 15 damage. Swabber digs his claws into the ground. I am one with nature. And casts Entangle. Out of the center of Swapper's claws, thick cables begin to tunnel their way through the ground towards the monstrosity, finally emerging and entangling the beast, stopping it completely. What? What is this? Oh, I'll save you guys. And Tubbs runs over and begins pulling the toys out of the worm's mouth. The toys are long since broken, but Tubbs apparently doesn't know this. 14. Hit. Nat 20. Two hits. 14 damage as Tubbs pulls the broken toys out of the creature's mouth. Each pull makes a big wrenching noise as the metal slams into the dirt. The creature shudders, and with one last gasp, the snake body goes still. The tongue rises up and begins to weakly puppet. Oh, 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 you've saved us from our miserable mouth existence. Oh my God, gross, you're alive. Tubbs wraps his arms around Gross and throws him onto his back, wrenching the tongue out of the creature's mouth. No, no, wait! This monster's last trick, attempting to fool the party into thinking the tongue was indeed one of the broken toys, has completely backfired as Tubbs rips the tongue out of the monster's head. Gross? Oh my god, guys, I think Gross passed out. It was all too much for the little guy. Come on, buddy. We're gonna get you back home to Tibby's room. And Tubbs throws the entire tongue over his shoulder and walks out of the creature's mouth. Some of the slimy pink tongue drags along in the dirt behind Tubbs, completely oblivious. The snake begins to flake and disappear. Eventually, the entire monster's mass is completely gone, floating up into the sky, allowing the dust to finally settle. This includes the creature's tongue slung over Tubbs' shoulder. Whoa. Guys, where'd he go? Where'd who go, lad? The little crusty guy that we were talking to before. He was in the creature's bath and I got him out of the creature's bath. Oh, he went the way. Did he go to that farm that Bill the Slinky went to last year? 
Aye, the very same, Boyo. I gotta visit that farm sometime. Faintly, as if in the distance high above you. This is over. Well, thank God that's over. What say we go check out that hoose? Buchanan! And Cuthbert charges toward the house. As Swapper follows towards the house, he looks down towards his claws. I am so powerful. We are so powerful! Hey man, don't get weird about it. I'm a convertible. The sound of Cuthbert firing his musket into the air draws the party toward the house. As the toys reach the entryway, they realize that the door is slightly ajar. With a long creak as the door gets pushed open, a well is revealed. Four or five stones high and a little ladder poking out of it, leading apparently deep underground. What a bizarre home. Timmy, are you, are you down this big hole? Helga goes over and peers into the depths of the well. You see only darkness. It is logical that a little child would be lost in a well. Wait, so little Timmy is stuck in a well? I think I saw that on Lassie. Well, chaps, there's only one thing left to do. And Cuthbert hurls himself over the side of the well. Buchanan! Man, that guy's crazy. I can't go down the well. I'm a car. See you when you get back. Danka, Tabs, why don't you go ahead and climb in? We'll help you get down. Okay, uh, I'll just start climbing and you can just jump up and down on top of me to push me further down the hole because I, I don't think I'm going to fit. Tubbs is saying all of this while he's lowering himself down into the well as much as he can. All right, get to pop it, I guess. The toys begin to disappear down the well. Tubbs, you've said that verbatim every time we've done this and we've done this many times. I mean, I, I figure it's only polite for me to t uh, say it every time. I mean, it's not on you to remember my whole thing about going down wells. Tabs, you know we will love you no matter what your size is. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate that, Helga. Make sure you uh, really jump down hard, because it's getting pretty narrow here. Oh, don't, don't you worry. Does it matter if I jump on your head or your shoulders? Do I, does it hurt you more or less? It sure doesn't hurt me more. You know I'm full of stuff. And I'm calculating that it has been at least... 432 times that this exact conversation has occurred between precisely the three of us because Cuthbert is always ahead of us. Cuthbert! The door swings shut on the ramshackle house, leaving Tutu alone in the barren wasteland. Deputy Tutu saving the day. Deputy Tutu is a hero. Tutu, Tutu, Tutu's alone. Tutu's alone once again. Tutu is gonna find some stuff to do, like counting the grains of sand. One, two, hey, two, that's my name. Tutu. This has been a Hero Club production, produced by Nick Williams and George Primavera, with associate producers Marty Abby Schneider and Dylan McCollum. Voice acting by George Primavera, Nick Williams, Hannah Fagerbaki, Dylan McCollum, Marty Abby Schneider, and Benjamin Watts. Theme song written by Matthew McCollum and performed by George Primavera. Special thanks to Kevin McLeod for his fantastic music, Mage Hand Press for their groundbreaking homebrew, and Marty Abby Schneider for his incredible artwork. Thanks again for listening, happy holidays, and welcome to the club. Ah, boom! <laughs> you don't need to make that <laughs> No, thank you for the sound effect, but I'll take care of that later. <laughs> You idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and Hannah panics. Come on. <laughs> <laughs>